What's happening guys, it's Cooper Carter here for G66 and on this week's Fractal Friday, I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to control one of my all-time favorite effects to use live, the virtual capo. So this week's Fractal Friday comes courtesy of a question I got from a student in my FM3 masterclass. You can sign up for any of my complete Fractal Audio masterclasses at classes.coopercarter.com to get the most out of your Fractal unit. The Virtual Capo is a really powerful block that can give you access to a lot of different alternate tunings and keep you from having to either retune your guitar or bring out another guitar on the road or to the gig if you play, let's say, one song a half step down and you don't want to bring out an extra guitar just for that, you can use the Virtual Capo for that song, tune down a half step, and then instantly, virtually, and seamlessly tune right back up to standard by just bypassing the block. But the student was curious about how best to implement this live so that you do have access to those different tunings. So let's say a half step down, a whole step down, or maybe even two whole steps down to C standard. So let me show you a couple different ways that we can implement this so that you have instant access to different tunings in your live preset. So I'm on the FM9 this week, and I've just gone ahead and pulled up a factory preset, the Texas Star, based on, of course, the legendary Mesa Boogie Lone Star. It sounds a little bit like this. Really nice dirty tone, something that would be a great pedal platform amp and really cleans up when you back off. So it's a great amp to use live. So let's treat this like a live preset. And by the way, one of my favorite things to do is go to gigs using just factory presets and they give you a lot of mileage. So don't feel like you have to spend a lot of time to get a great gig preset. I've played plenty of gigs where I make a couple of changes to a factory preset and roll with it. So what I'm gonna do is replace this phaser here with a pitch block. I don't really use a whole lot of phaser and the whole point of this is to use the virtual capo. So we're on the virtual capo here in the type menu. If you're not, you can go to the type menu and select it. It's right here at the bottom. And when I turn this block on, and set this detector source to input one, the block's going to listen to the raw DI signal of our guitar, which is gonna be really pure so it can get good pitch information. I'm gonna go ahead and shift down a half step. So down a half step, back to standard. And of course, the easiest way to have access to several different tunings is just to use channels. So I'm gonna set channel A to minus one, I'm gonna go ahead and copy channel A to all channels. So I now have the same thing on every channel. I'm gonna to go to B and wind it down one to minus two. So we're a whole step down now. On C, I'm gonna go down three half steps. So we're now in D flat. And then on D, I'm gonna go down four half steps. So two whole steps down to C. So we're in C standard now if we turn on the block. <laughs> So now I could use channels to just set up scenes that are based on my different tuning. So I could call this first scene standard and just bypass it. I could call this second scene E flat and turn it on and have it set to channel A. But then I'm using up scenes that I could have for different sounds, basically just making the same sound have different tunings. Now, if that's what you need, then go ahead and do that. It's very easy to do just using scenes and channels like with any block. But what I prefer to do is to set the pitch block to scene ignore. So that regardless of what scene you go to, regardless of what effects you have changing in those scenes, the pitch block will always either stay on or off and will always stay on the channel that you've selected, which makes the block really act much more like a capo or like tuning your guitar down, both of which aren't going to change based on what you're doing on your pedal board. So then all I would need to do is just go into FC edit and I have my live layout here. Luckily enough, I have an empty button here. So what I'm gonna do is just assign this button to effect, bypass, and then pitch one, which is our capo block. Then I'm going to assign the hold function of that to effect function channel increment decrement. I'm gonna select pitch one again, and then I'm going to set the lower limit to A and the upper limit to D. So now I can turn on and off the virtual capo by tapping my foot switch on my FM9. You could of course do this on an FC12 or an FC6 if you're on the XFX3 or on the FM3 itself. And then when I hold and release this button, I cycle between the different tunings. So let's turn on the block. I'm gonna play a note 
and I'll scroll through the channels using the foot switch. So now we have standard, half step down, whole step down, three half steps down, and C standard. Five different possible tunings with one switch. Very economical as far as real estate on your pedal board. Now let's say you didn't have the real estate to give up on your live layout here like I did. You could, of course, use an external foot switch to accomplish the same goal here. All you would need is either two external switches or a dual external foot switch like the Mission Engineering TT2. On the back of the FM9, you'd plug one into pedal one and one into pedal two. And now to tell your unit that these are foot switches and not pedals, you need to go to Setup, I.O., Page Right until you get to Pedal, and then change Pedal 1 and Pedal 2 from Expression to Switch. Then all we need to do is set up the button on a different layout that you can afford to lose some space on, let's say one you don't use. So I'm going to copy the Tap function. We're going to paste it here on Layout 4, Button 1. We'll copy the Hold function and paste it on Layout 4, Button 2. And now we've got our bypass and we've got our channel up and down. Now all we need to do is go into Setup, FC Controllers, Page Over to Stand-In Switches, and on Switch 1, we'll say Layout 4, Switch 1, and then on Switch 2, we'll say Layout 4, Switch 2. So now we have our effect bypass and our effect channel up and down, or increment and decrement. Now you can go back to your live layout and replace this button with anything you might need. So there is one more really kind of sneaky and fun way that we can adjust the shift on this virtual capo. This one I wouldn't necessarily use live, but if you guys want to try it, go for it. Just be careful that you're not activating it when you don't want to. So what I'm going to do is plug a pedal into the pedal one jack of my FM9. I highly recommend that if you are going to try this, use an EV1 or an EV2 from Fractal. They really stay right where you want them once you've set them with your foot. And now I'm going to right click this shift parameter. I'm going to select a source for this modifier as pedal one. And now I'm going to set the parameter range of our pedal to have a minimum of minus four and a maximum of zero or no shift. So just like our channels, we're tuning down at the lowest range to C standard. And then at the top of the range with our toe down, it's going to be zero. So you watch if I move the pedal now, the bubble moves. And if we look at the shift itself, as I move the pedal down, we're shifting down by semitones. Now to really take this one final step, when the pedal is toe down or all the way forward, you really want the block to not be doing anything. So I'm also going to tie this pedal to the bypass parameter by right clicking. I'm going to select the source again as pedal one. And now what I want to do is adjust this midpoint down to zero so that, as you'll see, it's bypassed at the very top. But right when I move it down to select E flat, the block turns on because the bubble has moved down below the middle point and we've now engaged the effect. So toe down, bypassed, down even a little bit, and we have engaged the effect and shifted down a half step. And as I move the pedal all the way down, you can see we're still engaged. So the effect is on. So as I move the pedal, you can hear. This is a very fluid way of changing tunings. It's a little out there, but if you're the kind of player that is constantly changing between drop tunings, this may be something that's useful for you. Or even capo tunings, you could always, of course, set the maximum here to be higher than zero. But at the very least, it's a very cool illustration of just how many different ways there are to affect your sound in the fractal audio world. So there are just a couple of ways to implement access to different tunings within the virtual capo block. Now, this is a block that I put in every one of my live presets because you never know when, let's say, a singer wants to tune down or you never know when somebody's going to call a song. Maybe a guest is coming up and that song's better sung or played on a different instrument in, let's say, E flat or D. So with the virtual capo, you don't have to retune on stage. You can just say, boom, everyone will look at you like, wow, how did you retune so quick? And that's the magic of the fractal. Whether you're using the Axvex 3, the FM9, or the FM3, you can get more tricks like this and dive even deeper into your Fractal unit by signing up for one of my complete Fractal Audio Master classes at classes.coopercarter.com. 
As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do make sure to subscribe to G66's channel, give this video a thumbs up, and leave me a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you'd like to see on a future Fractal Friday. As always, for all things Fractal, keep it right here on G66, and I will see you guys next week on Fractal Friday.